Hi, this is Tim. It's Kamala Harris. Good morning, Governor. Good morning, Madam Vice President. Listen, I want you to do this with me. Let's let's do this together. Would you be my running mate and let's get this thing on the road? I would be honored, Madam Vice President. Uh, the joy that you're bringing back to the country, the enthusiasm that's out there, uh, it would be a privilege to take this with you across the country. Well, let me tell you, I have just the utmost respect for you. I have really enjoyed our work together. You understand our country. You have dedicated yourself to our country in, in so many different and beautiful ways. And we're going to do this. We're going to win. And we're going to unify our country and remind everyone that we are fighting for the future for everyone. So let's get out there and get this done, okay? Let's do it. Do the work in front of us. Let's win this thing. That's right. All right, buddy. I'll see you soon. Take care. And the breaking news is big. In this unprecedented campaign, this season the likes of which we have never seen before, we have one more major development. Vice President Kamala Harris, the presumptive Democratic nominee now for President of the United States, has selected Minnesota Governor Tim Walz to be her running mate. A week and a half ago, two weeks ago, maybe seen as a dark horse. Now he has emerged as the choice. Our MJ Lee, Jeff Zeleny, John King, Jamie Gangel all reporting on this. MJ just saying maybe Walls, a vibes pick, seen as a Midwestern happy warrior. John King is here with us in New York, watching this unfold before our eyes. Let's just start, reset at the top of the hour, what Tim Waltz means for this ticket now. Well, it means, number one, the Democrats have their ticket. They're about to go into their convention. And after Kamala Harris clinched the nomination with the most unorthodox nominating process of our lifetime, the President of the United States st steps aside after winning the primaries. She wins a virtual voting among the delegates. And then she wants to make this decision. She wants all this cleaned up before they get to Chicago for the convention. So that can all be about prosecuting the case against Donald Trump and J.D. Vance and against the Republicans. Uh, so a very truncated process, a lot of pressure on the Vice President. So as, as voting Voters out there get to judge, you know, how she's handling this first first big executive decision. So why Tim Walls? We're showing pictures of him right there in a jacket and a and a shirt with no tie on. Earlier we had pictures of him in a, in a t-shirt. I do think the contrast here is going to be striking. This is a small town Midwesterner. Uh, this is a man who won a Republican House seat and held it in very difficult years for Democrats, he held on to it. Uh, so he has that small town rural appeal, which is why did Donald Trump pick J.D. Vance? Sort of the same idea. Can you go into small communities and make the case? He's the chairman of the Democratic Governors Association. I can tell you his fellow Democratic governors love him, mm -hmm. love him. Uh, they think he's smart. Uh, they think he builds consensus. They think he's really funny. Uh, and so they like being in his company. Uh, and that matters in a campaign. Mm -hmm. In terms of Harris being out, are you confident that you, you know, do you have the loyalty and do you trust uh, your partner out there in the campaign? Trail. Does that person at tense moments, and there will be a lot of tense moments in the next 90 days of this campaign, make you laugh and make you smile and maybe take some of the pressure off you? Can you do the small market television? Walls fits that bill. Now, we're going to see how he plays out. And again, I'm, I'll, I'll be a broken record on this. There is no data in the 37 years I've been doing this that says your vice presidential pick makes the difference in the end. However, it can hurt you. Some we could have a conversation about is Vance, has Vance hurt Trump or at least stalled Trump's momentum a little bit there. Uh, and it can, it can help you in the idea that, again, popular with governors, that helps you raise money. Uh, popular with governors, that helps get more people on the team. Uh, popular in small town America, create a little buzz for Democrats in places maybe where they're not always seen. And that is one of the Democratic Party's problems. In, in the years I've been doing this, you know, Michael Dukakis was my first campaign, 1988. He won 10 states. Massachusetts miracle. Yeah, Iowa and West Virginia were states won by Michael Dukakis in 1988. Those who are blue collar Democrats who worked with their hands on farms or in coal mines or in factories, the Democrats have lost those votes. Tim Walz knows how to win those votes. Again, the presidential candidate decides who wins the election. But a vice presidential candidate can help a little bit. And she's made a governing choice here too. A progressive governor who has been, who was in the military, in the house, then elected statewide and re-elected statewide. So you have governing experience here, again, in a, in a different mix, a Midwestern mix. She's a West Coast uh, politician. So it's, it's, a, it's an interesting combination. You know, politics, I always call it a casserole. Right? You're, bringing all these <laughs> you're bringing all these ingredients together and trying to make them work. Uh, the last thing I'll say is, in my travels over the last year, 
You know, one of the issues is people are so disillusioned with politics. Mm. That's why so, you have so-called double haters, people who don't like Trump and don't like Biden. Well, now President Biden's out of the race. So that gives the Democrats an opportunity. They have this opportunity to shake up the race, to get people to look again. So somebody who's a little different, mm. a little unorthodox, Kamala Harris is different. She's a woman of color, mm. right? So she's different in her own right. Now to bring somebody else different into the mix, when you're trying to get another look, um, it's an interesting pick. And you, you mentioned him being a happy warrior. That's yeah. not something that you always hear in politics. There's been a lot of people who have been really, really annoyed, pissed off. It's probably the best word you could use at the candidates recently using very dark language, et cetera, et cetera. Yeah. He's not that guy. No, he makes the case against Trump and Trumpism with a smile. And he says make it, he, he urges people to make it with a smile. And he urges people to say, don't demonize the voters. Don't demonize the people with whom you disagree. Try to have a conversation with them. Try to win them over with your own arguments and with your own details, not by you know, saying you're a moron or you're an idiot or go away, I don't want to listen to you. Try to find out how they got there. Minnesota nice. I what is, yeah, what, what, is the, <laughs> what is the source of their disillusionment yeah. and their disaffection? Not just push them away because they disagree with you. Yeah. Uh, let's go to Jeff Zeleny now. Uh, Jeff, there is this question about what the relationship was before all this. How much did Kamala Harris... Hold on, before we, hold on, before you go, uh, we, uh, we have a super chat, um, Jordan, and also a gifted membership. Go right ahead. Yeah, yeah, shout out to you again, Ronnie, for sending up. What you said about it was it a two dollar five dollar super chat on that? Yeah, you should have. Mm -hmm. Shout out to Ronnie for sending that five dollar super chat to support a chaos culture, and also shout out to Gore for getting uh, five membership to uh, to the chaos culture. He gave one to Christopher J, uh, E Black, Ronnie Alley, Cynical One, and Zar Zar B. So shout out to you, Gore. We appreciate you for giving five chaos culture radio members. Uh, the, the supporters of the channel. So we appreciate you. We really, really appreciate you, Gord. Thank you for that once again. But yeah, um, so uh, 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 Tim, Tim Walls, he is, we will be running for VP against Kamala Harris. You know, he's from the Midwest. So it definitely, it definitely shakes some things up because there are, because you look at Michigan and you look at Midwest Wisconsin back in the Joe Biden and the uh, Donald Trump race. Those two states were more of a flip states of which Joe Biden and, uh, and Kamala Harris won those um, states in electoral college votes. So to me, as a, for the Democrats, I think it's a really, really smart move to do that because you do want to get those states of Wisconsin and uh, also Michigan and also Pennsylvania to help, you know, even though that was those are three states are flip states, Making them states blue again when it comes to electronic, electronic, uh, uh, electoral college votes when it comes to your election by what you or what she uh, had for Tim Walsh. So when it comes to the Democrats, I think this was a smart move. Smart move, you know. Tim Walsh, you look at his history, you know, he, he's a really good guy um, because of what he did, you know, in Minnesota and everything. I think this was a quality good pick to run against the race between Donald for Donald Trump. And uh, his and, uh, and he's also vice president uh, JD Bass as well. But uh, go ahead, I came in. What's your take about you know the um, Tim Walsh being the uh, VP running for Kamala Harris? I really, I really liked it, Josh Shapiro. Um, he's a lot younger. Um, he's a little bit forward thinking, um, and um, you know what I mean. And and I was, I was under the, you know, I was under the impression, you know. She just went and got a grandpa all over again. We need young minds to shape this world. And I think that who's going to be able to have a bipartisan conversation. You know what I mean? J.D. Vance is, is, is going to come with some stuff. And I don't think Tim can be able to relate to what he's talking about. Josh would have been a better um, situation. You know what I'm saying? And that that's my point. You know what I mean? I don't know too much about him. Um, I didn't have uh, enough time to do any research. Yeah, me either. When it comes to Tim Walls, I um, like I'm learning about him now. But one thing they say that he's he's very liberal. He's a liberal, so he he's open minded to a lot of things. I think him on women's rights. Uh, he was uh, elected twice when it came to certain states. I forgot what the states were. The states were um. And not only that, but he's free. He, he's pretty much open minded. Uh, they say he's a great candidate when it comes to Kamala Harris, um, versus on uh, Donald Trump and um, you know Vance. But at the same time, um, 
I I gotta see his his, his um his political stand when it comes to policy. Now I keep telling people my issue with the whole situation with the Democratic Party is the policy. What do they have in place to like better the country, better economy, better uh the the immigration crisis, better um jobs, all of those. To me, if, if the policy good, I say okay, go. I'm going. I'm I'm going for it. But it seems like they're more of the liberal side. Like it's more freedom for the the LGBTQ community, and that's why I have an issue with. But at the everything else, uh, let's see how it goes. The debate's coming up soon between the vice the the two vice presidents, and then also the presidential um uh, the also the presidential uh, nominee. So let's see what happens. Um, go ahead, Jordan. Uh, so looking at a little bit of history, I want to read this off. So uh, there, here's a key note on this when it comes to black communities. He is an advocate for black communities. I want to read these guys for you. So Governor okay. Ross has steady past advocate for black communities, which is evident through his support of virus to significance uh, legislation. In July, uh, back in July, he signed the African American Family Arm. Uh, Perversion Act to strengthen protections for families at risk of separation in foster care systems. Um, earlier in February of 2023, he passed a Crown Act to eliminate this discrimination based, I mean, just discrimination bias of high texturist and style in workplaces for schools and in, in schools. Also in 2021, Walls formed the Missing and Murdering um, African American Women's Task Force to tackle the serious issues of violence against Black women. Uh, he has also uh, uh, championed uh, reproductive rights, ensuring access to service like uh, uh, virtual fertilization, and also, furthermore, his administration has has uh, prioritized accolading budget resources to support Black communities. So it seems like what he did in you know in a, in the state of, of of Minnesota when it comes to black community, he is a big big Af big big advocate for black community, uh, which is cool. So what I want to see is once the um, he debates you know the vice president um, um, from Trump sides and everything, you know how that's going to come out and everything um, with that you know, and also is and also is he going to help Kamala? To really advocate, you know, to really help, you know, the you know the black community, black, you know, the black the black community in the United States of America. So because with the you know, Kamala Harris, you're not hearing any type of policies of, you know, for me, I'm all about, you know, helping, you know, um, see some type of policy for like for the black community. So uh, we'll just see that, you know, maybe he'll show some type of policies to help support Kamala Harris about, you know, support do some type of policies for the, you know, for the. Uh, for the black community and thing like that. But like I said, we'll wait to see. Like I said, still more research to do and also still see with the debates for the vice presidency debate and also the president debate as well. So like I said, we finally, so so Kamala Harris got you know her, her vice president running mate and we'll just see how that flows and see what policy they got for us as, as uh, in a black community. Go ahead, True. No, no, but shout out to E Black. Yeah, E Black, somebody give to you. Shout out to yeah. God for the gift. So and, and also okay. Genesis out the dark. Shout out to Genesis out the dark. That's also in the building. Go ahead, Drew. Yeah, so um you guys so what are you guys saying about I mean what's the subject is about the VP who's running with her? Yes. Okay, so fill fill me in a little bit more about uh, the individual because I really don't know of him like that. I so, know. like, only thing I got for you um, for truth, like I said, he's um, but I he's a liberal. He, he's he like I say he's very liberal. He's a governor from and uh, from Minnesota. Uh, what I just read, you know, he's advocate for he's African. He's a big African for black communities. Um, when it comes to you know the George George Floyd um, uh, George Floyd death, you know he was you know. Big, big on that. Uh, back in 2020, he was a uh, big supporter on that when it comes to, um, uh, I'm sorry, I've got, a, got a brain freeze, but it comes to, you know, um, the, um, when, when he when he was uh, with the George Fortune West, he was, you know, he, he was kind of the first one to speak on that. Um, and that's really it for what I got right now. But like I said, we got more, I still got to do more research on him on that still. But, um, 